Hello there. So today we'll be doing a tutorial using the Xilinx Spartan 6 FPGA board, the SP601. And the goal of today's exercise is to manipulate the clock on the FPGA with our program. Um, slow it down so that we can see some change. We're going to be using the 27 megahertz clock right here. And the goal of this exercise is to have these LEDs count up from 0 to 15, so a 4-bit value. But we have to slow down the clock though because 27 million times a second, which is the clock speed that hurts, it'd be a little too fast to kind of see these LEDs. So we're going to slow it down to about half a second or so. So the software we will be using today is the Xilinx ISC 14.7 design suite. If you want to use Vivado, unfortunately Vivado does not support the Spartan 6 series or a lot of the older ones. Um, so today we'll have to use the ISC 14.7 design suite. So here we want to go to file and new project. I'm going to call this one counter underscore up. There we go. And we can keep this as HDL. You can call this whatever you like to. And click next. So this is one of the most vital parts of the setup process. We want to make sure that under evaluation development board, we have the Spartan 6 SP601 platform selected. This will make sure that we have all the right uh, constraint files and all the right settings that we need for, the, for our particular Spartan board. So we hit next on this point and finish. Here on the top left, we can click our board ID and click new source, right click it. And we can click Verilog module. I'm gonna call I'm gonna call this one counter underscore up, same as my project file. And again, you can call this whatever you like to. And next, here we can define our uh, input outputs and in outs, but I'll do that inside the code itself. And we say finish. So there we go. Okay, so I just copy and pasted my code for the counter. And the idea behind this, if you want to take a second to pause the video and uh, type this in so you can catch up, go for it. But the idea behind this is going to be, we have an input clock, the one I showed you that's about 27 megahertz. And we want to count up on the LEDs as the output. So unfortunately, 27, me 27 megahertz is 27 million times a second. That's a little too fast for us to see the LEDs turn on and off. So we have to create our own slow clock, or slow down the clock in some way. So I have a register here called slow clock. I have a 23-bit counter, which, which is one of the methods we'll be using to do so, and our four-bit LED output. So initially, we want to make sure that all of our states and our variables are all at zero, not some random value. So here I have our next LED to be zero, our LED output to be zero. So clock starts at zero, so it's going to be on the falling edge. We have counter at zero. And here we have always at positive positive edge of the clock. This is the 27 megahertz clock on the board. This is the one that we want to slow down. The first thing that I do is after begin, I say counter equals counter plus one. So I increment the counter by one. If the clock, or sorry, if the counter is at zero, I'm going to invert the slow clock signal. And if you think about this, it's only going to be zero at, a one, at one instance out of the 27 million. So as it counts all the way through all 27 million, one per clock cycle, you hit, you'll hit zero again when I do the reset. And this, it only triggers on that one instance. So this is how we get that one hertz signal. So inside of this, or this is right outside the begin, sorry we have another always at positive edge of the slow clock. This will set the next LED to be the next iteration of the current LED. So next LED is equal to LED plus one. If, the, uh, if all four LEDs are on, so if we have a case of 15, we're gonna set the next LED, the next state, to be all zero, so we, all, we just reset it. And here, always at the next LED, we're just gonna update the current LED with the next one, so updating the next state. Let me fix uh, this right here so it's not so confusing. There we go. So the idea is we're going to slow down the clock from 27 megahertz down to 1 and just have the LEDs output counting up from 0 to 15. So now we're going to do the constraints file. Going up here again to the uh, board ID, we're going to right-click this, new source. We're going to do implementation constraints file. And I'm going to call this one counter underscore up underscore C-O-N-S-T for a constraint. I try to keep the convention similar so it's not hard uh, to lose which file goes to what. So we can click next and finish. So here are the nets and the ports and locations for the 
our variables and the LEDs and the clock. So our variable clock is going to be the V10 location, which is that uh, crystal oscillator on the board. Our LED 3 is going to be the far LED, then 2, 1, and 0. They all go in order pretty much. So we want to make sure that this is saved. I'm going to jump over to our .v file and save this. Now here on the top left, with our counter up.v file, the project selected, we want to make sure that we're on implementation. And as we look down here, we can see synthesize, implement, generate the programming file, and configure. We want to double-click synthesize first. I'll skip through this so that you don't have to wait through the, the process. There we go. I got a net warning for one of my variables, but it's still completed anyway. So we are successful. Now the next step is we want to go to implement and double-click that. Implement design. There we go. Our implementation was successful. Now the next step is generate programming file. This one usually takes a few minutes, so sit tight. There we go. That one took about 15 seconds or so. Now lastly, we want to configure target device. This is actually where we upload our .bit file to our board itself. So let's click OK on that warning. Now this window pops up. The first thing you want to do is double click, or left click, sorry, uh, boundary scan. It's, it's a double click. Here is where we find our JTAG of our uh, USB port on the device. So when you have the when you have the Spartan 6 plugged in on the uh, JTAG to your US to your computer by a USB, you want to right click this, say add Xilinx device, and we're going to be using that .bit file that we just created. So double click that, right click this uh, icon here and say program. <clears throat> now we're going to go to apply and OK. So if your program uh, was uploaded to the FPGA correctly and successfully, you should get this program succeeded. If not, maybe your FPGA is not on or your USB is not plugged in or you have an error in your code. But if everything is all good to go, let's go check out the board. So it looks like our program was successfully uploaded. So as we see the LEDs right here, they're counting up in binary from 0 to 15. So we have a reset there. There's three, four, five, six, and this counts all the way up to 15. Once it hits 15, it should reset everything back to zero. Now, we had to slow down the clock from the 27 megahertz to about two, two hertz or so. If it was still going at 27 megahertz, you, the LEDs would all either look on or off at once, and it's just way too fast for the human eye to see. So this exercise was mainly just to help out with manipulating the clock in case you have some type of user interface, or if you need to have a custom signal itself, a speed. But it was a neat little exercise to get more hands-on with the boards themselves. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know, and stick around for future tutorials. Thanks again for watching.